Hey guys, I'm Taylor and this is Kevin. And for the last 45 days, we've been traveling from our home state of New Jersey to Key West, Florida, while visiting every coastal town along the way. In the last episode, we had a day to explore the Florida Everglades, getting our van attacked by vultures and checking out some manatees and crocodiles. Today is bittersweet because it's our last destination of the East Coast road trip in the man, as we make our way to the southernmost point of the continental US. Good morning guys, we have finally made it to our final destination almost of the trip and pretty much the reason we came in the trip in general. So we are standing finally in the Keys of Florida. This morning we pulled off at a little boat ramp right outside of Plantation Key um, so. to check or to get the sunrise. We didn't think it was actually going to be good but it actually surprised us. And then we are going to head to breakfast before we head to Marathon to get a quick drink before the 7 mile bridge and officially head over to Key West. Ready to eat? Some yes. Breakfast. First stop on the list, Lorelei's. This place came highly recommended by Kevin's dad for lunch. However, since we want to make it to Key West and go to that other bar before the 7 mile bridge, we're going to check it out for breakfast. It opens at 7 and it is 826 and I'm pretty sure we're the only ones here. This trip in the Keys is going to be a little bit different than the previous ones because we're actually not going to be living in a van. Instead, we're going to be staying in a hotel for three nights because we wanted a little bit more of a relaxing vacation. Plus, it's we heard it's really difficult to do van life in the Keys in terms of overnight parking. We heard you're going to get kicked out of wherever you're trying to park. And parking is like gold in the Keys. There's very limited and it's really expensive. So we just decided to bunker down in a hotel, relax, not have any worries, and just enjoy the last bit of this trip. And since the keys are quite pricey, we decided to book our stay using points and miles since we wanted to stay close to Duval Street for the convenience, but we also wanted the trip to be affordable. We pretty much use points and miles for all of our travel adventures, which is why we were able to travel so much in the past. And since we weren't traveling so much in 2020, we have a nice stockpile of points and miles that we can use for trips like this, where we want to take a break from the van and go into a nice hotel for a weekend or a few days. So we're currently at the Overseas Highway, making our way down to Key West. We're almost in the Marathon, which is our second spot for lunch. But there is just a walking trail along the Overseas Highway that we're walking onto right now, just to check out some more of the views. Taylor just spotted this iguana here. Enormous. The most enormous iguana I've ever seen. And when I saw it, its neck was all extended. Gross. I'm not really a reptile gal.
bridge is right up there. Nice lunch at sunset, grill and bar, or bar and grill. And then seven mile bridge for us. So Taylor has been to Key West before and drove this by herself after working night shift and flying from New Jersey, which is pretty crazy and bold of her, I would say. But uh, she saw this on the drive and wanted to stop here and it looks pretty freaking sweet. I mean, the views are just what got me. Like that yeah. must be an awesome place to just hang. And there's plenty of parking. I was a little nervous. Back and yeah, that's nice and big. Definitely. Oh yeah. We're about to enter the, we're about to get on the seven mile bridge that connects Marathon to I think Big Pine Key. I know it's the biggest gap between the keys in, of all of the Florida Keys. So it's a pretty long bridge. I wish I had the guts to drone over it, but I do not. Here we go. Stop number three. We're getting very close to Key West, but we saw this spot on Google Maps and it has over 3,000 reviews with 4.7 stars. So we decided to take the plunge and go for it. And they specialize in a fish called hogfish. And I never had hogfish. I've seen it on YouTube a lot and it looks really good. And Taylor's favorite fish is hogfish. <laughs> so not true. Well, it will be, and we're going to go try it out. I'm really excited. Parking's a little tight for us van lifers, so. Very tight. We actually had to switch spots so Kevin could park because yeah. I didn't feel comfortable. <laughs> Oops. Got the fish and chips and the hot fish sliders. So one thing that we didn't account for when we were packing up the van is what do we do if we decide to go into a hotel? Well, we're gonna use grocery bags, oh. backpack, and one duffel bag that Taylor brought well, back. Luckily I brought that. Luckily. We would be screwed. Yeah, after uh, Taylor went and worked for a few days, she brought this back and good thing because we would be Dunzo. We'd be carrying, we'd go to the grocery store to get extra grocery bags. Yeah, it would be no, no chance. So, this is what we have. We're staying at the Hilton Reach Hotel, which is a sister hotel to the Casa Marina, the most historic hotel in Key West. And we're parking our van here because they have this nice big parking lot without a garage so we could park our van. Otherwise, we'd be pretty much SOL. We'd be parking on the street for $64 a day. 64 bucks a day in a metered spot. So this is what we're doing. All right, let's check it out. First room, all trip. First hotel room. First. Wow, this is nice. Oh, this king bed. 
How oh, I miss not having to convert our bed every day. Also, if you have the parking lot. <laughs> I'll take it. It would be really nice if the cars weren't there. Yeah. You know the bathroom? Wow, it's big. Oh, we don't have to remove the toilet from the shower? <laughs> Modern conveniences. It's nice. It's huge. I think the bathroom alone is bigger than our whole than square footage. I would agree with that. So since we're diamond members with Hilton and we used our points, we don't have to pay any taxes or resort fees, which helps keep our money in our pocket. And because we are diamond members, we get complimentary water. We got an ocean studio suite upgrade since we just booked it for a regular king room. And that's why we have not the greatest view, but a we can see the ocean, which is really, really nice. So we'll take it and it's a studio suite. So the room's really, really big. In addition to that, we also get $30 total for breakfast. So breakfast is pretty much free unless we're going to be ordering some crazy stuff. We haven't had breakfast yet, so we'll check that out tomorrow. But that's a nice perk also with having elite status. And we do this all by using our credit cards. So if you guys aren't familiar with travel hacking, I highly recommend checking it out because it's a great way to travel and keep money in your pocket and let you go on trips that you may have otherwise not been able to do. Just like this. This would have been really expensive, like over 1200 bucks just for three nights. Now it's time to unpack since we don't have a suitcase or anything like that and we're making ourselves at home. I'm not gonna lie though, with Hilton and being a Diamond member, we don't usually get too many good upgrades. So I'm actually quite surprised with this one and I'm really happy about it and we didn't even mention anything about vlogging or doing anything for Helen so it finally worked out. I'm pumped. Good morning guys. We're here at Higgs Beach on the south side of Key West from Little Morning Run. And last night we went to a couple different bars, Irish Cabin, Sloppy Joe's, Island Dogs, and yeah. had some fun walking through du Duval Street. Today, what are we doing today? We're gonna play some pickleball, and then oh, yeah. swim on the beach a little, <clears throat> go to some bars later. Blue Heavens tomorrow. Blue See Heavens you guys tomorrow. there. Yeah. We just got done playing some pickleball. Now that we got our sweat on, it's time to go explore Key West. You made the right move going helmet style. I mean, person. Slow relaxing day. Oh, I thought it was a picture. Got her. Arguably the best part of the Reach Hotel. Free water ice sticks on the beach. The water ice stick. What do you call it? Water ice pop up. It's so good. After the beach, we headed for some drinks and then we were off to happy hour. For anyone looking to save a buck, we highly recommend going to Half Shell Raw Bar. Their happy hour is delicious and, and they offer great prices. We got a dozen oysters for 11 bucks and $2.50 beers. I'll give it back to you, huh? I got two. You got one. But you want more. Actually, it's not bad. 
We both stole the first one. I, I anticipated it being worse. Uh, what do you, mean? you don't know. It's on there. Oh yeah. Here we are. Good morning. So in Key West, we are officially in the southernmost point in the United States, in the continental. U.S. In the con con continental. Continental. In the continental U.S. of the 48 states. Now Hawaii, the South Island, has a place called South Point, which is technically the furthest south in the United States. But here, we're gonna go check it out and be the furthest southernmost point in the 48 states. We're getting here relatively early in the morning because yesterday we walked by and there was a really, really long line. So if you want to get your picture or whatever, we should just get here early in the morning. So the southernmost point I forgot to mention is 90 miles, only 90 miles from Cuba, which is crazy to think about. I think Bahamas is actually closest to Florida. Oh terms of another country. So the significance of mile marker zero, which is why we want to go, is it is either the start or the end of route one, just depending on which side of the street you're on. We think it's pretty significant because where we're from in New Jersey, we're closer to the southernmost point of New Jersey. And we have a road called the Garden State Parkway, which is basically measured by mile markers. When you get closer to Cape May, there's mile marker zero and mile marker one in Cape May too. So we can kind of relate to it and it's pretty cool. All right, so now that we got the southernmost point checked off our list and mile marker zero, it's time to eat some breakfast and we're going to Blue Heaven, which apparently is like the most popular breakfast spot on the island. It's so think. delicious. And it's literally Kevin's dad's favorite spot, I think, in and probably my mom. all of Key West. Yeah. Well, yes, Both of my true. parents, they love it. They rave about it. So we're gonna go check it out and see what all the hype's about. All right, so we just got done breakfast and it's a pretty cool environment. I would recommend getting there when the live music starts, which is like 10 a.m. I think we got there a little bit too early. They have good drinks Great. and the food's good and you gotta try the banana bread, it's delicious. So good. So, Half Shell Brawl Bar is officially Kevin's favorite. Spot. My favorite. Best happy hour Other deal. Only come here for happy hour though. Well, come here whenever you want, but happy hour is the best deal in Key West, arguably. No live music. If they have live music, the spot would be killer. Would be literally number one. But the food and the beer, $2.50. $2.50 beers can't be. Or $2.25 here with you, like nice Bud Light with a lime. Bud Light lime with a lime. As you can tell, I am a sucker for a good happy hour. But after Half Shell Raw Bar, we went to the Sunset Pier to have some drinks and watch the sunset, and then cruise around the other bars and pop in and out of them. Overall, Key West was pretty incredible. There's a bar and something to do for just about anyone. Oh, and don't forget about the Key Lime Pie. We are trying Kermit's Key Lime Pie because we heard, well actually we read, that it was the best, so here it goes. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Over here. It is so limey. And so sour. Really? It looks like cheesecake. That's what I was saying, like anticipating. No. Maybe with the, with a little bit of 
And this will be better? Let me try. Second try. It's terrible? It's not terrible. It's just very limey. So limey. Let me try it. And he loves it. Really? You like it a lot? You're gonna the house. Oh, yeah, this is cool. It's like uh, lemon lime gelato in like a creamy cheesecake texture with a little cookie on the bottom. Go. Oh, how was that? Stellar. <laughs> oh God. Just got done a little run on our last day in Key West. Today we are trekking back up Route 1 and start the journey back home to cold, freezing <laughs> temperatures. Not looking forward to the cold, but looking forward to seeing family. So our Key West trip is officially coming to an end. And it's beautiful today. I just want to swim the beach and relax. We have Instead, we're going to go drive a thousand miles. Is 1,399 miles back home. From warm, beautiful, glorious weather. To a new. To a cold snowstorm. To a I northeaster. A northeaster. Pure misery. Yeah. Going back home. Here it is. Home sweet home. Well, thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked our East Coast road trip from New Jersey all the way down to Key West. For those of you who've been watching us from the beginning, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate it. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and checking out our previous episodes from the East Coast Van Life series. With over 26 episodes taking you from Maine to Key West, or our Van Build series, which shows you how we built our van from scratch. But next up, we are taking the van out west, chasing some snow, and going snowboarding across the different ski resorts throughout the country. Thank you so much, and until next time.